What's up everybody? We're back on the water looking for these winter crappie. It's just me. It's been a while that I've been on the water just by myself and I'm excited. You know, this is the way I started crappie fishing. What got me excited about it when I was out here by myself on a beautiful crisp day. And uh, we're gonna put ourselves on some crappie. I'm gonna show you how that's done using utilizing side imaging. And then I'm gonna show you some active captain. I got it to work. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you some uh, live scope. I'm going to show you some side imaging. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing here. Hey, folks. Today, we're going to be talking about winter crappie and the tips and tricks that I do to try to find these crappie and put us on some big slabs. So, hey, we're going to be talking about side imaging, without a doubt. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about live scope. So, sit back, relax, get yourself a drink. We're on my favorite lake. Again, we're going to be talking about live scope. And we're going to be talking about the tips and tricks that put fish in the boat. If you like this type of content, please subscribe. Here we go. Get ready for a fantastic episode from Three Pound Fishing. Thanks to these great sponsors. Let's review our settings here on uh, side imaging. I like to utilize 70 left, 70 right. Um, if you hit your menu button, you're going to come through this kind of menu screen right here. And my sensitivity is right in the center. Contrast roughly around 15. And uh, again, I always use both sides of my side imaging. I don't ever go to one side or the other. And I, again, prefer that amber color. It suits my eye just perfect. So those are my settings. I think the biggest one you need to be concerned about is the 70 foot, 70 foot uh, right and left. Those are critical in my opinion because I think when you go too far out, um, you lose track of what you're looking for. In other words, you can't see it. So when we're utilizing side imaging, we are looking for shadows. And so black shadows are really easy to see. And I've been cruising this point right here and looking for some fish. Now I know that the, so the, the wind right now is coming out of the north and it's basically blowing up against this bank. And what's happening is that bait fish, those bait fish are actually going up that bank and those crappie are sitting around there waiting for them so all i'm doing is playing the wind folks it's pretty simple now that's a good group of fish right there and that's i'm going to throw a buoy so i just threw a buoy and now we have another one right out here so these are good marks right there here um, looks like there's some fish there here, look at this this is a big old plum tree right here so they're all along this edge and all that's happening like i said is that the wind is blowing these bait fish up against this incline and uh, the crappie are sitting there waiting. So they need to feed up. It's winter time, folks. We got active crappie. And uh, let's put some in the boat, shall we? This should be fun. This should really be fun. I'm just gonna cruise around in here and see if we can find some. If I can put my power poles down, that's what I wanna do. Um, that's ideal, because then I can use the live scope that's on the trolley motor and just sit there and watch them. And that's what we were doing a couple days ago, which was awesome. So eventually I will be putting a second live scope on this uh, boat. All right, power poles are down. Hopefully they can hold us. We're in kind of deeper water. Wow, we got a great picture right now. Guys, I hope you guys are getting that. Yes, you are. That's a great picture. All right, so the boat's stabilized. Now we're gonna throw a float. Those fish are out there. It's very clear. It's, we got a lot. And all they're doing is staying right on that, that edge. This is, this is kind of cool. I'm still getting used to the whole live scope, finding live scope thing getting finding winter crappie you know that's that's new for me just like it is wearing these things tech tip airprod uh, pros right here they're gonna stay in my ear hopefully so if I lose them in the water today I'm gonna be ticked off all right so before we get started I wanted to kind of walk you guys through my my slip float uh, setup here we're going to start with that, then I'm going to give you a different type of float I also use. So I use the Kamel floats. I believe this is a two and a half inch float. Uh, let me get it unraveled here. I always use a number four hook. That's kind of my go-to here on my home lake. And, you know, in the wintertime, I like to cast with the six pound, but I also will cast the float with an eight pound, which is sometimes makes it difficult. But I think uh, six pound is actually ideal during the wintertime. It allows you to cast it farther, all that great stuff. So let's just talk about the slip float thing right now. We utilize what's called a bobber stopper. I'm gonna bend this down here. 
and I use a plastic one. I think it's from like China. You get like 5,000 of them for uh, 10 bucks. I mean, just, uh, you know, really inexpensive and get them on Amazon. So there's your bobber stopper right there. And I set that to whatever depth I think the fish are at or whatever I'm seeing on live scope. I then use what's, I believe it's a two inch Kamel float and we utilize these beads here. Now you can buy these beads separately. And so as you can see, we put two on here. I say we, it's something me and Wade have always done. This bead here will, will be against the bobber stopper. You've got your float here against about a two inch Kamel. And then another bead here that protects the bobber from hitting the split shot. Now the split shot I'm using usually is a five during the winter time. I don't need it to get down there really quick. Um, I'm pretty consistent with that. Again, a six or 10 pound line, high vis, doesn't really matter. And then a number four hook. That guy's bent up all crazy. Kitty Wampus, but it's called a lot of fish. So we like that. So that's my setup with a uh, Kamel slip float. Now I do use a Kamel slit float. And what that allows me to do is to put that float on, on a, maybe I'm, I'm vertical jigging and all of a sudden I just said I need a float so I can throw it out to the fish. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. So this is a Kamel slip float and this is only about a one and a half inch float. Okay. It's called a peg float. I think most people would call it. There's usually a peg on the top and a bottom and it has a slit. That's the important thing. And what's nice about having these in a boat is like I said, I might be vertical jigging really quick at 10 feet, but then all of a sudden I want to slip a float on. Well, it's a whole process to put a, a slip float on. So I can put this guy on real quick. It supports that number five weight, which is important, which is another reason why I stick with the number uh, five uh, slit shot because this can support it. And if I'm going to throw out a float and it's only going to be about three or four feet, this is the perfect option. Now, if I go much deeper than seven feet, I mean, six, six, seven is about the most I'll throw out with this guy. Um, then I'm definitely going to have either another rod rigged up with a slip float or something like that. So. folks <laughs> quick fish I tell you what folks that's got a little spine problem going on there but great starter for a great day on the water those are my setups so then let's also talk about uh, briefly the size of rod that you want to use so I use a 10 foot rod okay so this is a 10 foot rod and to me, during the winter time, this is the perfect size rod, okay? And the reason why is because, and I've showed this in another video, is that when I'm out here vertical jigging, I can, I can pitch this sucker out there probably, I could probably pitch this out there roughly around 30, 35 feet with a 10 foot pole. An 11 foot pole is good, a 12 foot pole is good, but I think once you get into that nine, eight, that makes it really difficult. Uh, you can't pitch out that far, and I'll tell you, you just have a lot of control with a 10 foot pole. So easy pitch out. And um, so consider the 10 footer, even an 11 footer, even a 12 footer, they make it really nice to be able to pitch out to these fish that are about 30, 40 feet, feet away. You're not gonna spook them being that far away usually. So you can utilize that technique and having a longer rod is definitely a great uh, tool. Woo, that looks like a good picture. Let's see if they're biting. We're a little different fishing than we thought and the wind's picked up, so that makes it a really difficult. <laughs> But still fun, still fishing. We're gonna be hitting the field here shortly to get a deer. But uh, this is uh, this is a lot of fun. Good fish there. These fish are just everywhere. It's amazing. They're being a little stubborn today, but I guess I would be too with this 20 mile an hour wind. But this is a really good. 
good point. There's just a ton of fish here. You just gotta find the right color. I see a lot of fish out in front. I'm utilizing my live scope, maybe not as much as I have in the other times, but trying to put my power poles down it hasn't worked. Uh, the wind is just too great. They are 10 foot power poles and they're not holding me in six foot of water. Now you check that out folks. That thing is loaded. That's an American Fish Street tractor, probably about 40 days in, and it is just hammered with fish every time I come out here. It's amazing. Thanks for joining me today, folks. I appreciate it.